Hi, I'm Jason Buell from Columbia University. And I'm Jen Silvers, also from Columbia. And we're here today in Washington, D.C. at the 25th annual APS convention, presenting results from a neuroimaging meta-analysis uh, we did to identify the neural mechanisms that support emotion regulation. And if you want more details on this beyond what we'll tell you right now, you're welcome to check out our paper, which is currently in press at Cerebral Cortex. So there has been an absolute explosion in recent years of neuroimaging studies examining cognitive reappraisal. Cognitive reappraisal is a form of emotion regulation in which you change the way you think about something in order to change the way you feel. It, so these studies have uh, typically agreed on two things. One is that, the, uh, that reappraisal is initiated by domain general cognitive control regions in the prefrontal and parietal cortices, and two, uh, reappraisal leads to um, changes in the amygdala. This is a region that's known for its role in emotional perception in, and also in emotional responding. But the big question has been, what happens in between? Uh, so uh, one view holds that these cognitive control regions engage the ventral medial prefrontal cortex, which in turn directly modulates the amygdala. Uh, an alternative view is that these cognitive control regions actually change perceptual and semantic representations in the lateral temporal cortex, uh, thus effectively changing the input that the amygdala receives. So to determine which of these possibilities was best supported by the existing data, we conducted a meta-analysis of 48 neuroimaging studies of reappraisal. And consistent with our hypotheses, we found that reappraisal indeed does strongly recruit prefrontal and parietal cortices and modulates activity in the amygdala. We additionally found that reappraisal engages lateral temporal cortex, but not ventromedial prefrontal cortex. And taken together, this suggests that reappraisal involves engagement of cognitive control, which subsequently alters our semantic representations of emotional stimuli, and this is what leads to changes in our emotional response.